especially in the blocking area. So uh, I see you're working on spiking right now. Uh, I guess conditioning generally is very important right now. Yes, conditioning is very important. Also, in one match, we have what we call unforced errors. That's we put 17 spikes in the net and out of bounds. <laughs> Combined, it really cost us the match against Calgary. The Vikings resume play on the 9th and 10th of January when they play in UBC. They could do very well. Rhonda Sampson outlined some of the team's weaknesses and strengths. The strengths are our setters, I believe. They, they're passing it when it's up to the setters. It's quite accurate. Sets are out there every time. We just have to be able to put the ball away now. And your own spiking ability, I guess, has been uh, fairly dominant in a lot of the games. Um, I've been trying hard. <laughs> it's not always worked, but most of the time. you got a month break coming up. Is that going to affect things? Is everybody going to come back out of shape and uh, sort of out of touch when it comes to volleyball? No, we're probably going to keep up our training on our own and then come back ready to go at it again, fresh, and start all over really hard. So how do you feel the team can place? We should place in the top three at least. Um, coming second, I would expect, you know, in the next Canada West and the other two, we should do quite well, be EBC at least. And football news. Here it is close to Christmas time and still CFL football news in the sports. The BC Lions announced today that they've signed place kicker Louis Pasaglia. Every kicking and scoring record in the Lions fact book. He has been the Leo's leading scorer the past five seasons and is their career points leader with 737. He has kicked more field goals than any other BC Lion, 168. The most in a single season in 40, and the most in a single game in six. He kicked the longest field goal in the club's history last July against Saskatchewan, a 54-yard effort. He also has punted more yards than any other Lions kicker, 29,743, and has the most yards punted in a single season, 6,864. Basaglia definitely has been a key figure for the Lions since joining the team five years ago. In the National Basketball Association, we're going to get to a few scores in just a moment, but last night there was an exciting game between the Celtics and the Bulls. Quickly and cleanly, here Gerald Henderson steals and drives in for a stop. Boston took a 15-point lead in the first quarter, and the Bulls never did recover. Bobby Wilkerson did his best to bring Chicago back into the game. He wound up with 28 points, high for the game. Larry Bird led the Boston attack with 25 points. And while the Celtics did not exactly overwhelm the Bulls in the last three periods, their first quarter advantage was enough to propel them to a 115 to 98 win. In other games in the NBA, Cleveland down Denver 131-22 as Milwaukee 121, Detroit 104, Atlanta defeated Utah 109 to 97. French skiers made it two straight wins when Perrine Plan won the World Cup Women's Slalom race today in Austria. Last week, her teammate Fabian Surratt won the opening slalom of the ski season. And Bruce, a look at sports. Thanks very much, Robin. We'll be back with more news, including the final, final plan for Victoria's Highlands. And we'll talk with Jack Kelly, whose fall from grace is a book all about the Dirty Tricks affair. This is Andrea. She lives dangerously. No, she isn't a race car driver. She doesn't ski down Mount Everest. She has cystic fibrosis. Ten years ago, it would have killed her. Andrea is alive today because of you or someone like you. Help Andrea to live less dangerously for another ten years. Even a dollar can do it. Help a CF person live less dangerously. Someone you know dreams of making music. Bon Tempe Organs, one of the easiest organs to play ever. With Bon Tempe special music books, you'll be playing beautiful, real music in minutes. Your whole family will love it. But the most amazing thing about the Bon Tempe organs is the price. These electronic organs start at just $399. Available now at these and other fine stores. I didn't think you could improve on a Kodak pocket camera until I used one of the unique new Kodak cameras with built-in electronics sensor light flash. It turns itself on and automatically flashes whenever you need more light. It even turns itself off. You'll never worry about a flash again. A new extra light camera with sensor light flash. A great way to wrap up Christmas gift giving. When you see a spread like this, you might not think of Block Brothers, but you should. 
because their weekly catalogs list ranches, investment properties, and farms, as well as homes, apartments, condominiums, and townhouses. In fact, Block Brothers is to real estate catalogs what Webster is to dictionaries. And that really stacks up, doesn't it? The Doctors in this province will be posting notices in their offices soon to the effect if they don't get enough money from medical care plans, then they'll start billing patients directly. The doctors are negotiating a new agreement with the provincial government for Medicare payments. Indications are that Medicare is not going to give the doctors what they want. Health Minister Rafe Mayer has told the doctors to slow down. Today, Health Minister Rafe Mayer offered the counterattack to the balanced billing warning. He'll ask permission to draft legislation to make the action illegal. I wish that everybody would back up a couple of steps. I wish the doctors would uh, say, look, this is a kind of a silly thing we've done. Uh, we haven't given negotiations any kind of a fair chance. We've got three months to go. Let's go back to the bargaining table. And uh, I, as you know, I've said from the beginning, I don't want to get into acrimonious debate with the doctors. I prefer to negotiate on a, on a civilized basis. Minister says his position is one of protecting the public, but he wouldn't take this measure unless absolutely necessary. I'm going to assume, perhaps uh, somewhat naively, that the doctors will want to get back to the negotiating table and, and get off uh, uh, this inflammatory high horse that they're on. Uh, but I will just have it ready, and if it's necessary, then of course I'll suggest to the Premier that uh, we put it in the House if the House is in session, or perhaps even call the House back if necessary. The president of the Victoria Medical Association says the island doctors are behind their provincial negotiators. Dr. Michael Bassett says all they want from the government is a fair deal. Not new in the, any negotiation with government. Indeed, it's been in our contract for many, many years. Uh, up until this point, we haven't had to bring it forward because uh, negotiations with government have been equitable and, and there's been no problem. But um, I think this year, uh, because of the situation, government is taking a hard line with the doctors and we've had to bring this up as a stopgap uh, mechanism. Should the government go ahead and draft legislation, the president-elect of the BC Medical Association says they'll take the government to court. Dr. Ray Mart says the legislation will be tantamount to breaking the agreement. The final plans for the Highlands District of Greater Victoria should be in place within three months. For the past two years, the Capital Regional District's planning department has been planning and then changing plans for the Highlands. They finally come up with a plan that seems acceptable to most property owners and includes large sections of land set aside for parks. Yeah, the plan is to be given to the various community groups in the Highlands, all the community groups, and we're looking for input by early January for final implementation by uh, possibly early March. We're, we're looking for the modifications for January and the final completion of the plan uh, for March. We've instructed the planning department that's their deadline. There'll be sizes, recommendations for sizes, there'll be recommendations for various uh, park provisions and uh, we're very enthusiastic about the plan. I hope the residents of the community, which they've had a lot of input uh, into the plan, uh, are satisfied with the plan basically that they've come up with. Remember Jack Kelly? He's the man who started the Dirty Tricks affair and was at the center of that affair. Well, Jack Kelly says the whole Dirty Tricks affair could have blown over in a couple of days if the Socreds not tried to cover it up. Jack Kelly no longer works for the government. He's gone to work in Victoria and has just come forth with a book called Fall from Grace. In a little ground floor store in the 1300 block of Government Street, former government researcher Jack Kelly, the man who got caught counseling social credit workers to fight dirty in the last election campaign, is running the only brass rubbing shop west of Toronto. Somewhat ironically, he shares the shop with an antique dealer who is an executive with the NDP. The idea for the brass rubbing business came from a research project he did during his government days with the other central figure in the Dirty Tricks affair, Ellen Mackay, who incidentally is now living in Miami. Beyond that, Kelly is writing a book about the whole episode, entitled Fall from Grace, an allusion to the person Kelly says is largely responsible for the Social Credit Party's bungling of the affair. It's important to, uh, uh, from a historical point of view, uh, from a history point of view, to uh, um, get the facts in perspective and get the facts correct. Uh, a lot of things that have been said are not, uh, haven't been quite true, a lot of speculation. Uh, the Dirty Tricks affair, in my opinion, still, uh, still were not very serious. There were problems, and uh, as I said right from the beginning, I made a, a serious error when I said we should, you know, play dirty tricks. That was a mistake. Uh, 
Uh, I didn't realize we've been, uh, we've been taped, and consequently, I didn't think too much of that. And that was my problem. I didn't think too much at the time. However, um, I think the, uh, the following events, the subsequent events, uh, following that, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the revelations that came out, uh, were much more important. And I think that uh, this is where the problems occurred, where uh, people tried to uh, uh, cover it up, uh, didn't want to tell the truth, uh, and uh, uh, either by not saying anything or by telling uh, uh, outright fibs, uh, the thing was blown up into a major scandal, which I don't think was uh, really necessary. And I think a lot of people uh, suffered that shouldn't have suffered during that particular time. Uh, one of them I will name would be Dan Campbell, who I think was uh, treated very shabbily in this whole affair. Uh, I think the uh, issue, had it been handled properly, would have been dead in two days. And it wasn't anything more than that. It was a very minor incident that was blown out of proportion by uh, individuals who decided that uh, it should be kept quiet. As a matter of fact, uh, in the, at the time, I tried to take the whole blame, and I wasn't allowed to. It was rather uh, humorous. And I, I, I wanted to shoulder all the blame. And then I thought if that, if that happened, um, in the truest political uh, uh, um, beliefs, that uh, you t uh, one person takes the blame and everybody else is cleared, and that's the way to do it. Uh, but uh, because of a lot of bungling, I wasn't allowed to do that. And as a result, I think there were, in essence, about 12 people who either were, had to resign or lost their jobs or no longer working with the government, and that's unfortunate. Kelly says he will probably finish writing the manuscript for the book at Easter next year and will decide then whether or not to publish it. Bald eagles. They are scarce in most parts of the world, but in one part of B.C. there's lots of them. We'll have a look at that. And back with killer whales, a couple of bought by Vancouver's aquarium from Iceland, and Greenpeace's protest when we return. Heart disease costs the Canadian economy $2 billion annually. What are you doing to lower these costs? Do you know the risk factors involved in preventing heart disease and stroke? Our contestants must identify the following risk factors. Today in Canada, over 50% of the adult population is obese. Just look at you two. You're so fat you should be ashamed of yourself. It's overweight! That's right! Save your life. Think slim. Patrick, I found a new, a new air freshener. Pine forest fragrance. But, Katie, what about the two-way twice as fresh you're always going on? But, about? no, pine forest is... You say it eliminates odors continuously better than any solid or aerosol. But, no, pine... And gets rid of strong smells with a wave. I smell pine. It's new pine forest from twice as fresh. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> Try new pine forest from twice as fresh. Listen to the crystal, crystal dark. by reading TV Guide magazine. Next week's issue on sale now. The Vancouver Aquarium confirmed today it has purchased two killer whales from Iceland. Purchase price not divulged, but that's usually around $200,000 a whale. The killer whales are en route to Vancouver sometime in the next few weeks, and Greenpeace is protesting. Do killer whales, like this one, have hair? That's the puzzling question a Supreme Court judge was asked to decide today. Greenpeace say they don't, and therefore provincial legislation which defines a mammal as having hair and mammary glands is invalid. Greenpeace argued before Mr. Justice Howard Callahan today that this means a provincial permit allowing two killer whales from Iceland to be kept in captivity at the Vancouver Aquarium should be quashed. But provincial government lawyers say whales do have hair, albeit in one of their fetal stages. Anyway, say government lawyers, the case is irrelevant because if the legislation is ruled invalid, there will be no legal obstacles to stop the whales coming into Canada. 
Mr. Douglas McKay Brown, for the aquarium, described Greenpeace as presumptuous. He said a whole generation is growing up in BC who will themselves become great advocates for the preservation of whales by the very fact they can see them in the aquarium. But Greenpeace's involvement in the case is causing other problems for aquarium officials. Two Icelandic air carriers have told the news hour they won't fly the whales to Vancouver because they fear reprisals from Greenpeace, even though Greenpeace say they don't plan to do anything. That means aquarium officials are searching for alternative transportation, but they are confident the whales will be at the aquarium in time to make a Christmas present for Hayek, the male killer whale left alone after his female companion Scanner died in October. The judge hearing that case has reserved decision and is expected to hand down his ruling tomorrow. Whistler Mountain and Garibaldi Park, known for hiking and skiing, but known for something else as well. Our final report tonight deals with bald eagles, a rare species in most parts of the world. They fly in abundance in Garibaldi. The magnificent bald eagle, which is so rare in some parts of North America, there is a $5,000 black market price on its head, has never been so plentiful as it is right now at Eagle Run where the Chequamoose, Mamquam, and Squamish rivers meet on their way into Howe Sound. Eagle Run, in season, is a favorite steelhead fishing site, a few hundred yards from Squamish Airport, where the riverbanks become crowded with anglers. On this occasion, because of unusually warm weather and high water in the surrounding mountains, there are hundreds of eagles, and far more than BC wildlife staff have ever seen in a spot already noted for its eagle population. When we flew over by the, you know, in the helicopter, we estimated around 1,500 eagles just in this one little area here. They're coming down here because all these uh, fish carcasses are down here. Is that right? That's correct. These are. Uh, this is a carcass of a chum salmon down here. Uh, a lot of people feel it's kind of shame that salmon die after they complete their life cycle, but uh, in fact, they actually serve uh, a purpose. It it feeds these uh, magnificent birds uh, for the you know hardest part of the winter when food is hard to get. With the return of dry weather here, the river is receding and the eagles are already dispersing to their preferred territories upriver. The eagle is essentially a vulture and must go where his special food can be found. He's a, an opportunist. He, he eats what, uh, what he can and if there's dead fish for him to feed on or dead carrion, uh, that's what he's going to go to first. The eagle is often used as a symbol of military power, but despite its fierce looks, it's a timid bird and unless you somehow got hold of one, it wouldn't attack. In fact, the only protection you need in eagle country is a wide-brimmed hat. Once a child wants to spell, the spell is cast. Speak and spell from Texas Instruments. That is correct. With snap-in modules with hundreds more words for growing minds. You are right. Speak and spell, part of a family of products for richer tomorrows from the Learning Center of Texas Instruments. Because a child's tomorrow is never just another day. This is a fire emergency. Gotta go. Report to number one call. Oh, fire call. When a fire breaks out in small B.C. towns and communities, everyone depends on the volunteer fire department. B.C. Lotteries helps finance the training programs for these dedicated people in all parts of our province through ticket sales of the Western Express, the Provincial, and Super Loto. Here's why everyone shops at London Drug. For a limited time only, all three radar detection units from Bell Products are specially priced, starting as low as $49.88. And everyone's...